Hello everyone, my name is Dejbir Chahal and I am providing a summary of the article High Tibial Osteotomy, an update for radiologists, recently published in AJR. Given the growing interest in high tibial osteotomy or HDO, radiologists should become familiar with the basics of the procedure and the role of imaging in its evaluation. This brief presentation highlights the radiologic aspects of the more commonly carried out medial opening wedge HTO, focusing on pre- and post-operative imaging appearances. HTO is a surgical procedure used to treat symptomatic unicompartmental osteoarthritis with malalignment. HTO is felt to be effective because it serves to offload forces transmitted to the arthritic compartment, potentially reducing knee pain and delaying the progression of osteoarthritis and ultimately delaying the need for total knee arthroplasty. It provides an option for patients who prefer joint preserving surgery as an alternative to knee arthroplasty. Ideal candidates for HTO are patients who are young, active, and non-obese with various deformity of the knee resulting from isolated medial compartment osteoarthritis. Various deformity is addressed by medial opening wedge HTO. This slide demonstrates images of a standing hip to ankle radiograph in a patient who underwent medial opening wedge HTO, including the preoperative image on your left and the postoperative image on your right. The red line shows the weight bearing axis, which is defined as a tangent passing from the center of the femoral head to the center of the tibio talar joint. The preoperative image confirms marked varus deformity with the weight bearing axis passing through the medial joint line. The postoperative image shows the weight bearing axis has been shifted to a neutral position, offloading the medial compartment. In the medial opening wedge technique, an osteotomy cut is made in the posteromedial proximal tibial metaphysis, and a gap is opened which shifts the weight bearing axis laterally to correct varus malalignment. The gap is filled with bone graft material and stabilized with plate and screw fixation. Demonstrated on this slide are AP and lateral radiographs of a status post healed uncomplicated medial opening wedge HTO. Bone graft material at the site of the osteotomy is fully incorporated. The plate and screw fixation securing the osteotomy is intact. An additional anteriorly positioned screw secures a concurrent tibial tubercle osteotomy. The altered anatomy created by a medial opening wedge HTO can result in patellar baja. Due to this, TTO is typically performed concurrently with a medial opening wedge HTO for large corrections. This lateral radiograph depicts a medial opening wedge HTO with plate and screw fixation as shown by the red arrow in conjunction with the TTO secured by two screws as shown by the green arrow. Pre-operative standing hip to ankle radiographs are used in assessment of malalignment at the knee and allow the precise calculation for the correction required for HTO. Malalignment at the knee is defined as any deviation of the weight-bearing axis from the center point of the knee joint. Various deformity is confirmed when the weight-bearing axis passes through the knee medial to the medial tibial spine. The image on the left is a standing hip to ankle radiograph. The radiologist typically determines the extent of varus or valgus deformity using the weight-bearing axis tangent as previously described, which is shown by the yellow line passing through the medial tibial joint line confirming varus deformity. The detailed image on the right illustrates the complex pre-operative technique for planning the size of the opening wedge to make the required correction. Radiologists do not typically provide this measurement, however details of this technique are available in the published article. Posterior tibial slope is another important parameter evaluated on the lateral knee radiograph which is illustrated in this image and discussed in detail in the article. Medial opening wedge HTO tends to increase the posterior tibial slope. Increased posterior tibial slope can result in anterior tibial translation and increases the potential risk for ACL injuries and medial meniscal tears. Coexisting ligamentous instability therefore influences the choice of MOW or LCW HTO, the latter of which tends to decrease tibial slope. Sequential follow-up dedicated knee radiographs are essential and are obtained at regular intervals. Post-operative standing hip to ankle radiographs are also obtained annually to assess for alignment and any loss of correction. Loss of correction can be identified on both radiographs and at clinical assessment. 
It is important to compare follow-up post-operative radiographs with baseline immediate post-operative radiographs to assess for changes in the weight-bearing axis to confirm loss of correction, which may be very subtle if only the most recent radiographs are used for a comparison. Radiographic signs of healing after medial opening wedge HTO include early bone resorption, faint thin radiopaque bands that reflect early new bone formation, blurring of the osteotomy and bone graft margins, and finally, bridging trabecular bone. These images demonstrate sequential frontal knee radiographs showing a post-operative MOW HTO using a locking plate and screw fixation at two weeks on the image on your left, six weeks in the middle, and 12 months on your right, showing radiographic signs of progressive healing. Several complications can occur following MOWHTO, either in isolation or combination. Factors that contribute to post-operative complications include higher corrections, those of which are greater than 20 millimeter, non-locking plate fixation, and several patient-related causes, including smoking, diabetes, obesity, and non-compliance with weight-bearing protocols. The main complications of HTO surgery include delayed or non-union, fracture, hardware failure, and loss of correction. The definition of delayed or non-union can vary. Many orthopedic surgeons define delayed radiographic union as absent or incomplete radiographic union at three months post-op with complete union by six months post-op. Radiographic non-union is usually defined as the absence of substantial radiographic union at six months post-op. Orthopedic surgeons classify post-operative adverse events into three clinical categories. Class 1 events that require no additional treatment, Class 2 events that require additional or extended non-operative treatment, and Class 3 events that require additional or revision surgery or long-term medical management. While discrepancy between the radiographic and clinical signs of the union may be present, the presence of clinical symptoms are key to guide management. Fractures and hardware failure can be easily overlooked on post-op images. The radiograph on the left shows an example of a class 1 adverse event manifested by a non-displaced hinge fracture through the lateral tibial cortex at the margin of the osteotomy as shown by the yellow arrow. A hinge fracture is an extension of the osteotomy plane through the lateral tibial cortex. The impact of a lateral hinge fracture in MOWHTO on postoperative outcomes such as delayed healing or non-union has been debated. The patient was asymptomatic and did not require additional treatment. The middle radiograph also shows a class 1 adverse event manifested by a minimally displaced tibial plateau fracture indicated by the blue arrow extending proximally from the osteotomy plane the patient was asymptomatic and did not require additional treatment. The image on your right is a lateral knee radiograph illustrating a class 2 adverse event demonstrating a single fractured screw shown by the red arrow. The patient needed to continue protected weight bearing for longer than the usual six weeks. Loss of correction is a class 3 adverse event often necessitating revision surgery and can be identified both on radiographs and at clinical assessment. Early radiographic identification is obtained on follow-up post-operative radiographs compared with early baseline post-operative radiographs to detect subtle changes in the weight-bearing axis. Other radiographic examples of class 3 adverse events which may necessitate revision surgery after HTO include more extensive hardware failure, loss of correction, and non-union. The image on your left is a baseline frontal radiograph of a knee after surgery which shows a medial opening wedge osteotomy shown with the solid red lines and fractured screw shown with the blue arrow. The image in the middle of the same knee obtained four months after surgery re-demonstrates the fractured screw shown with the blue arrow and the development of delayed union with collapse of the osteotomy shown by the broken red lines. The image on your right is a coronal reformat from a CT obtained shortly after the middle image confirming delayed union manifested by marginal sclerosis and unincorporated bone graft shown by the yellow arrow in addition to a lateral hinge fracture with breach of the lateral tibial cortex shown by the black arrow.
The goal of high tibial osteotomy is to shift the weight-bearing axis from the arthritic component to a more normal point in the joint. Medial opening wedge osteotomy is commonly carried out. Radiologists play a key role in recognizing complications. Discrepancy between radiologic and clinical signs of union may be present. However, the patient's clinical symptoms are key to guide management. Thank you for your interest in this topic.